got to have the mind of Christ to understand what it means. Amen? Amen. And it's in the Songs of Songs, chapter 4, verse 4. Songs of Songs, chapter 4, verse 4. Somebody asked me, is there any chapter or any book in the Bible that calls Songs of Songs? Yeah, there is. It's right there. Songs of Solomon, some will call it. But it's really songs of songs. Amen? Praise the Lord. So here it is. It said, can we read it together? One, two, three, everybody, church. Thy neck is like the Tower of David, built for the armory, whereon they hang a thousand bucklers, all sheaves of mighty men. Wow, if you say that to your wife, she can get angry at you. Because it doesn't sound very romantic. Can you imagine? Your husband goes to you and says, Baby, your neck is like a tower of David built for an armory. She will say, What do you mean? Are you talking about Mike, Mike Tyson or who are you talking about? No, you. Your neck is <laughs> like a tower. Amen. Build for an armory. You know, armory is not pretty. So that neck is strong. Where on they hang a thousand shields. Praise God. Of the mighty man of David. God help me give you a quick word. And then we'll worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. I entitled my message today. It's time to get off the weapons of the walls. Get off the weapon of the wall. Amen? It's time we pull down the weapon from the wall because it's time to go war. Amen? Get the weapon off the walls. Tell your neighbor, get the weapon off the walls. Say it again. Get the weapon off the walls. David was a warrior like no other. He was a dangerous man. When the enemy know that David is a part of this army, they are trembling. You know, when you look and you read about David, it looks like such a romantic guy who just played the harp. He's so cute boy, red haired, so kind, so gentle, so honoring. Yes, it is true. But David was violent. Somebody say he was violent. David was so violent that at 17 years old, he killed his first giant. Not with a sword, not with a gun, but with what? A slingshot. This boy was so violent that he teared down a bear with his bare hands. Don't think these are just stories. It is truth. It's not an illustration. God is not trying to give you a picture so you understand what it means and all this. No, 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 no. This happened in real life. One day, young David was keeping the sheep of his father, and a bear, a grizzly bear or a black bear, just came out trying to catch and to kill the lamb. And David just rose and ran after this bear, caught the bear. Now, can you see this picture of a man running after a bear to catch the bear, big bear? Black bear and tear the bear apart. And he was not even 17 years old yet. Yet the Bible says he was ruddy. In other words, sharp, good looking, smooth. So on one side, he's so cute and he's so gentle, but you can read wrong. On the other side, he will take on a bear at an age less than 17, tear the bear to parts to protect the sheep of his father. People of God, I'm trying to provoke you this morning. There is one place in Christianity where we have to be civilized Christian. Acting really nicely, worshiping nicely. But there is another place where you have to let the violence come out of you. Yes. Do you see that? It's like what Jeff was saying. There is some emotion that we are quenching because we still want to keep our dignity. I'm here to tell you there are some battle until you let your emotion flow out, you will be in it for the longest time ever. Are you hearing me, somebody? It's good to be cute and to be mannered 
and have dignity and honored and to have good manners. But there are some moments you have to jump out of those good manners and become a warrior, ruthless, merciless. Are you hearing me? Where you can hold on anything that comes to try to steal from your family. And you say, you have to walk through me first before you get to my children. I'm going to tear down every bear and every lion. Another day, a lion came forth again, David. Just in case we talk about bears and us Africans, we feel like, what is the bear? No, no. The Bible says no, a lion also came. So everybody's covered. Those who live in the cold, they are covered with the bear. Those who live in the warm, they are covered with the lion. A lion came out. They called the lion the king of the jungle. When he roared, everybody ran. That lion came out and he found another lion. Are you hearing me? I said the lion came, but he found another lion. And that lion was Rudy. He has a red hair like a lion. Are you hearing my sakatayaba? And he said, you're a lion in the jungle, but I'm a lion in the kingdom. You touch these children, I'll take care of you. Are you hearing me? And David get violent and he took the lion, wrestled the lion, cut him to pieces. And then he go home cute. Oh, little David is so handsome. Look how cute he is. He can't even kill a fly. Yeah, that's true. But there is one part of David that if you play with it, he takes you down. That's the part I'm trying to stir up in you, Christian. This morning, I want to provoke you to let the violence come out. Because this kingdom suffered violence. And the violence take it by what? It suffered violence and the violence take it by force, not by cuteness. <laughs> you take it by force because it suffered violence. The devil is not sleeping, brothers and sisters. He's still killing. That's why I say the weapon has to come off the wall. There are still children in this city being molested. There are too much abortion in this land. There's too much injustice in the courts of justice. There is too much rape and too much disgrace to women. There is too many injustice in this land. We need to get the weapon what? Off the wall, somebody. Are you hearing me? Our government won't do it. Because when you deal with principality, you don't deal them with flesh. You deal them in the spirit. You deal them with weapons that are spiritual, mighty, not carnal. We have to get the weapon off the walls. We want to receive more than we want to fight. We want to pray less and get much. We want to worship less and get much. We come to church, we don't worship, we sit. Okay, I'm present, that's what counts. No, your presence means nothing if you're not active. You have to be engaged in the atmosphere, to build the atmosphere, to be a part of the atmosphere, to worship God. You didn't come here to do business. You come here to worship and to praise God. Hallelujah. No, you don't know my struggle. I really don't know your struggle, that's true. But God knows your struggle. And if your struggle can prevent you to worship, if your struggle can press you down for you to praise, that struggle will remain too long in your life. But if you can stand and lift up your eyes, even you can cry, you cry. If you want to weep, you weep. But at least I'm going to lift up my hand to the Lord that I serve. Glory. I just came from India. The rest of the team is there. They are coming soon. We've seen the hand of God move in such a way. They are poor, not having much, but you cannot compare with their worship. Yeah. These people, they are poor, but they worship crazy. Everybody's clapping hands, even when there's no instruments. Yeah. But here we are. Amen. I'll give you praise. Yeah. I don't like what they sing. When are we going to have the red song? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like something else. <laughs> we are not here to entertain. We are here to praise God. Yes. By the way, every, sing we, every song we sing is not for you. Yes. Nobody sings a song for somebody here. Are you hear me? We sing it for God. And if God likes it, that's what matters. So you should join in the party. Are you hear me? You should join in the party. We come in the house of God to party with our God. We celebrate our God. To worship our God. To praise our God. To adore our God. 
to sing song to our God, to dance for our God, to run for our God, to jump for our God. Him who did not spare his own son and give him up for you and I, I will not give you all things. Worship is not an option. Praise is not an option. It is our duty as believers to express thanksgiving to the God who saved me, to the God who died for me, to the God who paid the price for me, to the God who forgave me of all my sins, to the God who gave me hope and life, to the God who gave me purpose. I will worship him in the, in the valley. Even when life gets tough, I will still worship him. Hear me, brothers and sisters. David picked up the Ark of the Covenant. After so many years that the Ark was away, he put on a cart, and they are entering the city. Uzzah touched the Ark, and he fell down, and he was dead. David was so scared, he ran away. David went later to pick up the ark and he began to dance like a crazy man until his pen fell down. The king, the king David, the wise David, the great leader David, the warrior David, the worshiper David, the great king of Israel David, the great great grandfather of Jesus Christ. He danced until his pen fell. Are you greater than David? His wife was in the windows. And the wife said, what a dishonor. You know why she said that? Because dancing was, were slaves. Dancing was for slaves. Slaves dance in front of their masters. Slaves dance in front of their masters. Noble people didn't dance. Dancing in those days was a disgrace. Somebody had to dance for you. The same spirit is in the church. Some people are waiting for somebody to dance for them. It was only slaves that danced to entertain the king and his guests. So when she saw David dancing, she said, people are supposed to be dancing for you. We are not from a dancing culture. What are you doing? Disgracing our name. Disgracing our family. You are not a slave. And David looked up to her like that with the eyes of a worshiper. This time David just bought into something David didn't know. Because David didn't dance before. He went to the house of Obed-Edom. Obed-Edom was casted out of the community of believers. Obed-Edom did not have the right to come in the church. Obed-Edom didn't know how to entertain the presence of God. But Obed-Edom was a dancer. Every morning, Obed-Edom would wake up. He didn't know how to do the prayer. He didn't know how to say, Father, in the name of Jesus. He didn't know any of these things because he never been to Sunday school. And he never been in church. He has no clue of the regulation and the rules. But he was from a dancing culture. And Obed-Edom would wake up and begin to dance before the ark. And because of a dance, God blessed his family even though he was a pagan. <coughs> he didn't know all the rule of Christianity. He didn't know communion. He didn't know this type of worship. He had no clue of preaching. He didn't know the Bible. He never been to church. He was a pagan. But he knew one thing, dancing. And he began to dance in front of the ark. And because of his dance, God bless him. His children have children. His cows have children. Everything prosper. Everything becomes fruitful. And then David said, hey, this pagan is getting blessed because of the ark of the covenant. And David came to Obed-Edom and said, hey, what have you been doing with the ark? He said, I don't know. I just wake up every morning and I dance. The Bible says he left the house of he left the house of Obed-Edom with gladness. 
Gladness, that word is connected to revelation. It's when you receive a revelation, that type of gladness comes to you. That type of joy comes. In other words, Obed Edom taught him something he didn't know. Obed said, yes, is you guy who go to church? Me, I don't know those stuff. So I just wake up and I dance. I'm a dancer. And God love a dancer. God love a dancer. God love the dancer. And God begin to bless the pagan who was a sinner because of a dance. That's why David, when you receive a new revelation, it brings gladness and he's so passionate now. He's dancing now like not every sick person he offer. He give an offering and he dance. He dance so crazy. You know, it's like when you just receive Christ, you're more passionate. He just received a fresh revelation and he begins to dance like a crazy man. His pain begins to fall. His wife never seen them. Nobody ever saw David dance like that. And the wife said, hey, what are you doing? And he said to her, you, you will never have a child again. If the lack of dancing can close your womb, dancing can open your womb. We don't dance and worship God because everything is fine with us. Everybody, we just hear struggles and challenges will come. It's a part of life. But we refuse to bow down to wait to steal our praise and our worship and our dance. Glory. Are you hearing me, somebody? You know who cut the head of John the Baptist? Who is it? Huh? Huh? John the Baptist's head flew out of his neck because of a dance. The daughter of Salome, a demon-possessed woman, the king wanted a dance. She released a dance so powerful that it entitled the head of the king. And the king said, I will give you up to half of my kingdom. <laughs> she didn't pray. She just danced. If a dance can make a wicked king give up to half of this kingdom, how much more a dance from a righteous person like you and I before God to a righteous God? You watch all demonic manifestation in the earth, they dance because they pervert the real dance. When people worship water, you see them dancing around, around the water. There is nothing they do without dancing, except Christians who think they don't need to dance before God. And all of you, when you are in the world, you are a super dancer. Yes. Nobody could stop you. You are on this big speak of bam, 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 bam. But now you come to the house of the Lord. I don't want to sweat. I have my makeup on. And God knows my heart. That's really what matters. Did you notice? Every expression of worship in the Bible is through the body. Yes. Have you noticed that? Yes. I will lift up my. Yes. Lift up your hand like this. It's an expression of the body. I will lay down before you. I will kneel down. I will prostrate myself. It's all an expression of the body. Yet, we sit down, no expression of body during worship. Praise the Lord. I say, praise the Lord. Amen. I am from India. I ate a lot of curry. So if you give me a hard time, I just go back there. It's 30 degrees there. <laughs> Let's stand up on our feet. Hallelujah. We have to get the weapon of the wall. We are going to get the weapon of the wall. We are going to get the weapon off the wall. We are getting the weapon of the wall. And one of those weapons is praise. Praise is a powerful weapon. As was spoken of already in Acts chapter 16. Yes. At midnight, Paul and Silas, they were singing hymn and praise. And the heaven just show up where they were. Foundation was shaken. As we worship today, foundation shall be shaken. We need to have an invasion of God in our circumstances. That the locks will be broken. That God will release you in a higher dimension of praise and worship and connection with him in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus.
I want to give one minute clap offering to the Lord. And before you start, let me tell you. You see this church sometimes we go like this. Hey, hallelujah. I love you, Jesus. You think we just want to clap hands? That happens only when you have a sense of the presence of King Jesus. You don't clap just for anybody. When you are in worship and suddenly you feel God is walking by you, you see him in his glory and in his kingly anointing, you cannot stop clapping hands. I'm telling you, you become like a crazy man. Because when a king passes and you sense the presence of the king, you can only applause. That's why we clap hands. Not just because we want to make noise. But if you have no revelation of such, you will never tap into it. Because you will remain ignorant. So every time I feel that presence, I feel the kingly anointing begin to operate. I can't stop clapping. I begin to clap. The more it feels real to you, the more you clap, the faster you go. I told you years back, when we were at the primary school in the village, when the minister of defense or finance, whatever, is coming to visit, all the students are lined up like that. You've been there, some of you. You are lined up like that. You, know, you will wait for five hours. The guy is not coming. But you're not tired. You're waiting. It's like a king coming to town. But in church, every side minute you sit down. For what? I am standing here the whole sermon for two hours. Why should you be sitting? Because you work harder? We will be waiting for four hours. Under the sun. It is heated up. And then suddenly the guy arrives now. You have no more strength. But when he step out of this black car, ay, 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 ay. you don't need your teacher to tell you clap hands. Automatically, when he's turning his, his head toward you, boom, 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 you become crazy. He's just a human being with a human authority. But yet we clap hands. Yeah, president, I can shake his head. Oh, no. People even faint because they see Michael Jackson. Women, Ooh. they faint. We cannot worship God without a vision of God. If you don't have a vision of God, you will not be connected in this worship we are talking about. You will still be in your grocery store counting your money. We need a vision of the one we worship. Clap your hand, all these people. Yes, yes. Let the nation hear the resounding sound as we cry out because he is king, king, king Jesus. Hallelujah. I went to India. They didn't have much instrument. And I'm telling you, the instrument is the hands. These women, oh my God. The women sit this side, the men sit the other side, right? And the worship begins. I mean, I feel like their hands. Powerful. When man engage in worship, heaven come down. So I want to give one minute of praise offering to the Lord. Just clapping. I want you to see his grandeur, majesty, God walking by today. He is king of kings and lord of lords. He's not just a little guy there on the, on the bottom side. He is the God of the universe. He is crowned. Are you hearing me? King of king and Lord of lords. Let's put our hands together to celebrate him.
You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of our praise. You are worthy of your praise, Lord. You are worthy. Let dance today before we go home. Let the foundation that are ungodly be shaken and demolished. Let every wall that stands against your advancement be demolished today. It is time to get the weapon of the wall. Let we worship Him like in the days of Joshua. Like in the days of Paul, like in the days of Jerusalem, like in the days of Joseph, let me worship him, oh Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. God, you so good. Lord, you are kind. Lord, you are wonderful. My God, you are excellent. I say, God, you so good. 